this is an accidental video a video that i'm making on accident and it's only on accident because of the topic and the subject i just been out screwing around on the little bikes you know what i'm saying having fun just doing it up doing what i feel like doing <laughs> It is a R3. Hey girl! a lot more obviously i made that video showing that i've been teaching Jalen how to wheelie and all that inadvertently i obviously have to get back refreshed and get in the mix of doing that shit to my damn self i've always grabbed the r3 uh mainly it's because i grabbed the closest vehicle to the front of the garage and the easiest one to get out and this one's been kind of tucked away behind all the other bikes for months so as i've been yanking up the r3 and getting all of these wheelies going on on the r3 and the grub of course I've been out of practice on this. Now it ain't like I can't do a wheelie on this thing. Obviously I can. <laughs> But the deal is, is I've been doing so many wheelies on the small ass bikes that the power curve on this, the weight on this, everything is just so much different and I was clearly out of practice. The reason I don't make YouTube videos going out doing wheelies all over the place, because for me, I did that, I lived that, I'm over that. Everybody's doing that on YouTube. Me, I just really like showcasing the work. I love dedicating myself to the work of a craft, to the work of a skill.
when people that I admire and look up to, when they look at me and they're like, damn, cuz you're, you're really doing a damn good job. I love that part. So. So yeah, I can get on the freeway and do hella hundreds of miles per hour wheelies. And like most YouTubers now, they don't really drop it back into balance point because guess what? All their bikes have lift control and wheelie control. I'm all on the wrist and foot brake. Uh, I just have always done wheelies like that. Never wanted a bike with electronics because I never really wanted to get into that mix. And honestly, my interests always have been like slower parking lot style wheelies. <laughs> My goal and focus always is the low speed wheelie, low speed maneuvers, using the brake as much as you can, as much as you want to, as much as you should know how to. For those that are new to me, I ride like my track bikes on the street. When I wheelie, it has to wheelie in the condition of the track setup. Tire pressure is, is full. My gearing is not super aggressive. These come with a 45. I think this is a 48 and it has one down in the front. Just your standard track setup. So when you see me lifting it from a dead stop, it's, you know, it's me really working at it. I couldn't do that yesterday. Or I, or I actually, let me come 100% clean. I could do it yesterday. Today I got a helmet on, yesterday I didn't. Um, so I wasn't willing to loop it yesterday just trying to do something. All right, so we back in the garage. Technically, I really had to prove that to myself. Before I prove anything to y'all, I'd really be having to prove shit to myself. It was just kind of funny. Like I said yesterday, I noticed I tried to wheelie that. It didn't work out how these work. Again, it's it's all stock. All these bikes are stock. Well, not stock. Track setup for these for show. Sure. This is track setup as well, but it's still very far from like modified this is the most modified thing in the garage a lot of people were always asking like yo how do you wheelie it what rpm and what speed what gear were you in none of that shit matters because it's case by case basis and i can't tell you how to wheelie anything if you don't even understand or even relate to what i'm saying if i say bump the clutch I don't mean dump the clutch. Bumping the clutch is literally doing this. You'll feel the bike move and grab. If you don't understand what bumping the clutch is, I can't even give you my method of wheeling because you don't understand or relate to how I wheelie the bike or how I get the bike up. So I was planning on going out and wheeling this, but I'm glad I didn't because I was so out of practice because of these things here. I could barely wheelie that shit. So that's why I popped out today to kind of just really remind myself. Yesterday I didn't have a helmet on, so you can kind of see in the shadow, I just had my beanie and a GoPro. Today I threw my helmet on and people always say, wear your gear, dress for the slide, not for a ride. Man, shut the f up. I've seen many body bag dead people in riding gear because they had gear on, but rode like idiots. Gear don't save you. Talent, experience, and just cautiousness is what gets you to the crib. So because I had a helmet on, I knew I wasn't gonna scramble my noodle on the pavement today, so I don't care about throwing the bike up. If I am really out of practice and loop the bike, I'm not gonna get my head exploded. I could walk home, leave that shit there, go pick it up later and get my daughter from school. This may not even make it as a video, but just in my, in my efforts of teaching my son the wheelies, I had to go reassure myself the process is this to get the bike up and my process ironically works on any motorcycle that I have
been more than tires. One thing I love putting on is what's right in this bag. Grips, handlebar grips. So these are factory, these are the stock grips. They're big, chunky, they look stupid. It feels like you're holding a hot dog in a bun. Aftermarket grips on literally everything. But I started to get redundant. You see, it's the gray thin Renthals on everything. Every bike got the gray Renthals. One bike in here got some different, some dominoes. And the dominoes do feel pretty good. I don't know if you can see. And maybe I could do a side by side that I'm holding this stable enough that you can see the difference. With this bike, I really do like to rock with this blue theme. I'm hoping these dominoes is close to this color blue. We did add sliders, so we got that protection. We are gonna have the axle sliders here in a couple of days. Tires right there. I'm not really sure if the dominoes are as thin as the Renthals. I really do like the Renthals because of how thin they are. A lot of people always see in my videos, why are you always wearing motocross gloves on motorcycles? The main reason why is because grips are so big, I wore thinner gloves. So that I was kind of getting this feel. Comfort, control, everything. It's just all there when you change the standard grips. So let's get these on there. We can throw them on there. They're not as thin as the Renthals. The Renthals are real thin. But that blue is really fucking close. Let me throw this on the other side as well and we'll be complete. These were a little bit different to mount than what the Renthals was. Uh, mainly this one because it's got that insert. Pretty dope though. I'm not going to lie. I do like the color. The color is really good. It can't be spot on, obviously, but it's so damn similar. I really do like it. Just a little different look. Again, it's uh, it's thinner than the factory grips, but it's not as thin as the Renthals. This one kind of feels like the throttle side. The throttle side is obviously a little bit bigger, but it's dope. It looks really dope. And I mean, I know I slapped it on there, but obviously the process goes a little something like this. So y'all know the vibes. We get them off the same way that we get them on. One is bigger than the other. Obviously, the smaller is going to be that. Bigger is going to be throttle side. I do kind of like this because with the Renthals, both sides are real squishy like this. The Dominoes kind of has some support, but I don't know. I don't know if that makes it thicker or not. Nah. But with the Dominoes, they are branded, so you're going to want the brand name going up. But let's go ahead and Toss them on. Oh, uh, something that I like to do. The shit fits fairly secure as it is, but I just do this just cause. There's not really any high points on this thing. So grip glue. Obviously we're doing that because once these grips slide up, it's gonna smear the glue all the way up it. Got the larger diameter one. These are actually gonna be pretty damn secure on here, but we're still gonna do what we do. There you go, that looks good, right? Have the domino pointing back straight at the rider. Looks a little crooked. Let's line that joint up. There you go. But that's tight. I'm with it. I feel it. A little bit of color, a little bit of pop. And I mean, I might go with what Jalen said. Jalen said, because this has blue wheels and we got all this actual little color in the mix, I might have to go ahead and powder coat these wheels to match something up with this bike. This bike still looks saucy to me, but Jalen's hint at throwing some color on the wheels will add more to this bike as far as like the look. You know what I mean? But we got to the final portion of this build and this is an exciting part because this is the one I was most questionable about. Making this little R3 the twin of this R6 as that R3 is the twin of that R1. So as we see this R6, it has these headlight covers on it. It's race fairing, so there is no headlight behind this fairing. There's no headlight on this bike. We made it look like it has headlights. So this bike does not have a headlight. <clears throat> 
Now, the reason I didn't go race fairing, because I know some people are going to say, oh, you can get race fairing and then get the headlight stickers and make it look like headlights. No, there's a specific portion right here um, and certain little areas like this. The race fairing, that, that kind of goes away. You don't get that body line. So, I mean, I drew up templates on how I wanted uh, to make a headlight cover or something like that. I was, I was even pretty close to just like running these if I could have mounted them. But I found an option, UK option or whatever. I ordered them a while ago and they just got here. I just put them in. As you can see, they're headlight covers, they're lens covers. So no headlight, but it appears to have a headlight. And that's the way that I wanted it. Uh, if I got clear headlight covers, you'd see straight through, see fairing stay, shocks, and it wouldn't look like it looks now. The tinted ones, you don't see anything. So I decided to go with the tinted windscreen. You know, give or take certain places, tinted windscreen just had to fly. Because as you see clear and clear with this, that looks amazing. Tinted and tinted with this looks amazing. So this little bike looks sick as hell now. I'm really hyped that that portion was the one that I was worried about. Now that's completed and I don't have to use those. Plus they got the contour and the shape of the original OEM headlights and it's amazing. Now for this, some people might say, well, why don't you cover this up? I'm not covering this up. Uh, we you know we got the daytime running light that goes right there, but I'm gonna put a GoPro session right here. It's gonna sit off the bottom of that. GoPro session is gonna be right there, so we can get GoPro footage straight out the front without having a GoPro sitting off of the front surface. I, I actually hate that. That's why on this one, I run the GoPro on top of the dash and look through a clear windscreen. That is kind of the sickest view, but this is going to be in the same place, just down low. That's gonna be where we get front facing footage from. I did front facing footage behind this windscreen when it was on that bike and it just looks disgusting. <laughs> sick as hell man this little bike is ill both of these little bikes is ill actually your body back you pull the bike back more got a nice hot situation from the factory and I'm gonna tell you how cheap everything really is the entire seat unit from Yamaha for this bike is only $25 I was looking for parts and things and stuff man Sometimes you'll increase what you're spending when you're piecing together shit from eBay. Just go straight to the factory, see how cheap you can get it for. We got a brand new seat and hardware. That's good. It's nice and tactile and sticky. It's it's amazing. It's it's far different than like the smooth out, worn out leather. Matter of fact, I should nah. No, no, no. But anyway, uh nice situation there. Got the brakes done, the brakes are on. This bike is really ready. I just realized I, I put in the cancel request, but I think they already shipped. 
Um, again, these tires are fine. I could run on them continuously. I got new tires here. Um, I was going to run my Q4 120 and the Q3 Plus rear 140 on here. So this would have tires. But I ordered another set of tires because I was going to pull these tires off of here, put it on here, and run that new one. But I just realized uh, I did get Dunlops, but they're slicks. They're medium compound slick. I kind of did, but kind of didn't realize that I got slicks. Uh, I tried to cancel it because I'm not, I don't do tire warmers. I like to get off and go, pull it off the trailer and go. We'll see if I can do that. I know uh, it might take a little bit of time, a few more laps, maybe to warm them up. But tire warmers are highly recommended for slicks, track day tires like that. Like these are track day street tires. You can go out there and get to jamming, but slicks, they need some temperature in them. Everything's ready to rock. Everything's done. We're we're good to go. It's pretty much completed. Kind of bittersweet. I feel like there's still some stuff I want to do with this bike, but I think everything's done. Honestly, there's really not much more I can do to it. Well, there is. There's there's a ton more I could do to it. Uh, suspension, big brake kit, build the engine, tune it, it's full exhaust, uh, blah, blah, blah. But we're not trying to make a Blue Crew bike. We just got a good practice bike, a nice, reliable practice bike. And it's time to test them. Let's see what they do. We know they wheelie, but do they track? Do I still know how to track? That's the question. We'll end this vlog with that, and I'm going to get y'all two because I'm out.